Good morning, and welcome to Sunday Soul Day. Good morning, Allie. Good morning, Demisha. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. We are thrilled to have Ashley Abney, who is a certified Jay Shetty empowerment coach, a former athlete, children's book author, and a devoted mother of two. Welcome to Sunday Soul Day, Ashley. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here with both of you. Absolutely. Well, we're equally as thrilled and can't wait to dive into your background. There's so much to cover, so we'll do our best to do it within the hour. Um, but wanted to just first kick it off with where did you grow up and, and where do you currently reside for people who are searching out for empowerment coaches? Yeah, yeah. So um born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and then I've been in the Northern Virginia area since I was two. So uh, my family moved there. I'm still in this Northern Virginia radius, about 25 or so minutes from Washington, D.C. So just love this area. Great people. And, you know, the city nation's capital is very accessible. So um, just have made a home here. Um, so I'm a true Virginian. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm located. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, your earlier life? I know you started off uh, as an athlete playing basketball. Take us through your journey a little bit before you became an empowerment coach. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's see. I think when I think about my childhood, I really like sports is the word that comes to mind because I feel like we were always in the car going somewhere um, to practice, game, you name it. Um, let's say I started out in cheerleading and did that for a couple of seasons. My sister's nine years older than me and she was a cheerleader. So I was like, I want to be like her. And I did that for a couple of seasons, tried gymnastics for like all of seven days. And I'm like, wow, this is fun, but really hard. So we're, we're not going to do that. Um, but during cheerleading one season, I was like five. And I remember telling my parents, like, I want to be out there. And at the time I was cheering for football. So they were like, I'm sorry, out, out where? Um, and so, so I think what I really meant was soccer. So that, that evolved and I was actually a soccer player most of my childhood. Wow. Um, and it was pretty, pretty good at it. I got invited to uh, try out for the Olympic junior national team and uh, went through that process, which was amazing. Um, so I made all the cuts up until the last one. And I, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, I don't th remember being like super disappointed. I felt really good about being there and just was like, this was a really cool experience. And I felt like I could hang with these girls. And I was like, it was cool. Um, and I think if I had made that last cut, my trajectory would have stayed in soccer. Um, and there was a reason it, it didn't happen that way. So um, between my freshman and sophomore year of high school, uh, another one of those moments I went to my parents and I was like, mm, yeah, that other sport I've been doing on the background, I want to do that full time. I want to play basketball. So they were like, probably again, like what? Uh, but it's cool. I, I was like, kudos to my parents. I don't remember feeling forced to do anything. I don't remember feeling like, uh, no, you're playing soccer and this is what you're doing. You know, they allowed me to just do me. Um, and so I transitioned to basketball full time and um, I had a coach at the time. She's like, Ashley, this is really late for you to switch over to, to basketball, considering you want to take this through to college. And I remember her just kind of just being real with me and just being, I'm going to try my best to get you, you know, what an offer that I can. And, um, you know, and of course, there's different levels and different divisions. And I remember her aiming where she took where she wanted to put me. And I was like, no. I'm going higher. I'm going higher. I, thank you. I love you. And I still love her dearly to this day, but I was really late. <laughs> um, and so she transitioned me and I trained with her you know, a lot and really worked me into getting a scholarship. So I played college basketball at Longwood University, um, had a couple injuries there, but was fortunate enough to be a student assistant coach. And they kept me on scholarship and then senior year um, returned and, and finished up. So it was Beautiful journey. Uh, you know, I'm so such an advocate for sports. I feel like so much of what I learned today, I've learned through that journey, leadership, work ethic, discipline, you name it. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my sports journey. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. And it, it's so interesting. You share a similar start to Allie because Allie also got started in gymnastics. Okay. And, and it's so interesting. You transitioned into your sport that carried you through college and got earned you a scholarship. Um, I also got a late start in track and field, like much later than majority of the girls who started when they were, you know, youth. 
Um, I actually started like the summer of, uh, I think, eighth grade going into ninth. So um, got a really late start, but earned a scholarship to UCLA. And Ali also is an athlete. You want to jump in, Ali, a little bit? Sure. I it's I love listening to your story because similar to you, my parents had me trying everything and didn't have me locked into one sport and started with gymnastics and cheerleading and ballet. And then I didn't, I, I swam and then I didn't start playing water polo till sophomore year of high school. And all my peers had started in like sixth or seventh grade. So similar to you had to play the catch up game and ended up with a scholarship to Davis to play water polo. So love that. I love that. Female athletes. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So Ashley, can you tell us a little bit about your um, experience when you had a, I I guess, a pivotal changing uh, moment um, and how you went from playing basketball and uh, had gone through some stuff to your healing journey of self-discovery and reconnection with your authentic self? Sure, sure. Um, I think, you know, I love that journey is in that question because it truly has been a journey. And I think I thought maybe it started a couple of years ago, but when I look back on my life, it actually probably started about four years ago. And I vividly remember being on the beach on vacation with my then husband at the time, I'm now divorced, and my best friend on my other side. And I remember just saying, I, I don't feel like this is it for me. And even admitting that I was not happy or something was wrong when I knew I had a lot of great things felt so guilty. It didn't feel even right to say out loud. Um, But I just was like, you know what, I'm going to say it. And this is how I feel. And I said it and they were kind of exploring like, what do you mean? You know, and I said, I don't know. I just feel like I'm supposed to be doing more. I feel like I'm supposed to be helping people. I just feel like I remembered Ellen at the time who would always just be like, here's a car and here's a check for $10,000 on her show. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to change people's lives in some way, but I don't know how to do that. And here I am on vacation and I'm like, I'm like, this sucks. Um, And so it felt so bad to even say that, but I said that and then all of a sudden I they were like, well, you know, what are you thinking? And what came to mind first was something about alcohol. And I was like, I think I need to look at alcohol. And they were like, what do you mean? You don't have like a pro, you know, I don't see you having an issue with alcohol. And I was like, no, I don't think a quantity issue, but I think like a my relationship with alcohol, I need to look at that a little bit. And that allowed me to just start realizing and consciously paying attention to when I go to have the wine with dinner what's actually what am i feeling that i'm kind of suppressing or maybe trying to not feel and it was kind of a way i was realizing at the time where it was kind of like your body's trying to give you these cues of what you're looking for or these emotions that are coming up and you're kind of pushing them down a little bit in certain ways and that was the only way that came to mind i don't know where any of this was coming from but i realized i was already kind of on a journey before i even realized it And so um, that's where I started. And I started consciously paying attention to like even the base, the simple, you know, you have a glass of wine with dinner. Is something coming up for me that I feel like I need to do that or why or when? And from there, when I slowed down and started paying attention to my emotions, things started to get really clear for me on what really I was pushing down or what was like needed my attention. So that was kind of the pivotal moment. And then fast forward there, that led me to a couple of years ago, really going deep um, in my di- divorce was starting and that process and that journey. And I saw a post one day that was just like the work that you don't do, your kids are going to have to do. And I was like, Oof, I'm motivated by challenge and responsibility. So I was like, no, 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 no. I have to, do, I have to do something. And in, in that athlete mindset, I'm like, bring it on. If it's hard, if bring it on. Like I will take on the pain for them to allow them to live life more fully and um, allow me to show up for them in my most authentic self so that I can be there for them to support them through their journeys as well. That just stood out to me so much. The work we don't do, our children are going to have to do. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to take a moment to embrace that because that just motivates me all the more to do the work for myself. So I provide a space for my children to work on their stuff. They don't need to work on their stuff and my stuff. Right. Thank you. And then I just really quickly wanted to touch on the alcohol piece. I think that's something that I work on with my clients. What, 
was it behind the drink that you're experiencing that uh, we want to look at? And oftentimes, oh, I just want to relax. I just want to have fun. Well, why weren't you relaxed? What's going on? Stress. Well, how do we de-stress first? And then we talk about if you're going to have a drink, you want to do it to feel better, not good, because you're just going to intensify whatever space you're already in. So it's interesting that you came up with that all on your own. Can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so funny because that it started on that day at the beach and these were thoughts I didn't even know where they were coming from, but I felt safe enough with those two to just say it. And I'm like, let's just see where this goes. Um, what I realize is, you know, I think there was a lot of things in my marriage that I was pushing down. Um, and so it was trying to just cope with some of that because what am I going to do? Get a divorce? Like this, these were the thoughts, like, what are you, like, what does that even mean if you face that? So I think there were things there that I was like, oh, I don't want to feel that. Um, I think there was things with my career because here I am trying to say, like, I want to make a change or an impact in the world, but my career was great and I was good at it and it was a way to make money. But I was like, I don't feel like I'm doing something like I'm stressed out. It's not good. I have the Sunday scaries, you know, every day feels stressful. Like I, I have anxiety about opening my laptop, you know, it was, so I think there were just those were the two biggest things once I slowed down to say like, okay, what are you feeling if you're going to grab a drink first? It started to put spotlights on parts of my life that needed my attention. And um, I actually don't even know, I don't remember where it came from that I had that realization. But from that day, I downloaded an app where I can start tracking my habits and I just would start to see like watch when you did, I had one drink today and what was the feeling before? And like, what do you feel after? And I started, I've been doing that since 2019, just to make sure I stay on top of my consumption and, and, and the reason behind it really. Yeah. Wow. Well, in a, in a behavioral therapy, we call it the ABCs. So we do the antecedent, what's coming, what happened before the behavior, the behavior, and then the consequence. And it looks like you were able to track that on your own. So it's an actual behavioral therapy technique. Awesome. Wonderful. Didn't, didn't know that. <laughs> I tell you, we learn something new on Sunday Soul Day, whether it's through our guest or or through Ali, or you know, hopefully people are learning from me. Um, yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you were a corporate uh, professional for fifteen years. What were you doing before you transitioned to the Jay Shetty Coaching Certification School? Yeah, um, I was working in corporate hospitality, and I worked my way from like the front desk all the way up to you know a, a corporate level that I was really proud of. So that helped me be like an expert at everything that I was doing, um, which was great. You know, that, that allowed me to be, you know, take, uh, be grateful for many promotions and, and all of that. Um, and then I got to the point during the pandemic where I'm kind of like, okay, I'm not challenged anymore because I know kind of like everything and I don't feel like I'm learning. So I'm just, that fire is just not there anymore. And I was doing product development um, at the time. And so I left my company after 14 years, which was like, oh, my gosh, um, and walk off the first cliff kind of in my life uh, and went to tech doing product development as well. And I was like, yes, my fire is lit again. Like, this is great. I'm learning. I'm challenged. I've got imposter syndrome going crazy, but we're just going to keep pushing that down. Um, and so I just was trying to just find my fire again. And um, for about eight months, it worked. And then that fire went out again. And I'm like, this is not working. Something is not aligning with this. And I was already on my healing journey. So I'm like, I think this new version of me is not aligning with what I'm trying to make it fit in this corporate space. And so I started to be like, okay, I, what do you want me to do? And I started meditating and going really deep into like a serious meditation routine. Be like, I'm trying to do it my way and it's not working. Like, what would you like me to do? So I started meditating um, a lot and, you know, ironically in one meditation, and this is why I really work with my clients on meditation because it's just so free and available to us and you can get so many, so much goodness. But um, in one meditation, I saw myself in a coaching capacity and I was like, well, I am not a sports coach. Like what kind of coach is this? So I start looking into it and I'm like, life coach, what is a life coach? Like, I didn't even know what this was. I just saw myself talking to clients across a table and kind of guiding them. And then I found, uh, you know, the algorithms worked in my favor uh, through Jay Shetty's program up at me a couple of times on Instagram. And I, and I remember joining my first call once I decided to be in that program. And I was like, 
This is where my people have been hanging out. This is where my empathetic, warm nature, nature, uh, kind souls have just been hanging out. Like I just felt such a belonging in that group. Um, and I was like, this, and you know what? This makes complete sense because I've unformally been doing this all of my life. I've always been that teammate, that friend, that colleague that's pulling out strengths in people and demanding that they make people in their life see them the way I see them. So I'm like, this all makes complete sense. It all makes complete sense. And I think what we naturally gravitate to has something to do with a reason and a why toward our purpose, but sometimes we don't see it because we're so good at it. Absolutely. So that is so spot on. Uh, what really stood out is uh, similar to my journey as well in tech. I'd been doing it with people my entire career, you know, not not really putting a name to it. And I even had coaches of my own, uh, but, you know, just just didn't really think that that was what I was supposed to do. And the calling just kept getting louder and louder for me. And so, like you said, the algorithm worked in my favor on Instagram and then again on Google. Uh, and and I, I joined the Jay Shetty Coaching Certification School. So, so grateful that you did as well. Yeah, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. And I started trying to take clients like before and after work and make the two work because I was like, well, I have to work, you know, and then I was like, okay, now you found what you love to do, and you're going to burn out. So we can't do both. And so I just kept meditating, kept meditating. And I remember like the um, asking us to come back to the office kept coming up, kept coming up, and I'd get so much anxiety about that. And then the last one came and I had got no anxiety. And I'm like, why am I not freaking out about this? I have no pre or post care for my children. Like, what is your plan? And I was not doing any action to create a plan. So once again, in meditation, I heard kind of like, because you're not going to be there. And I was like, mm, wow. what do you, what do you mean? I have to work like, this is the safe, this is the safe option. Right. Um, and I was like, okay like here we go let's walk off another the cliff and i just kind of went for it and it's just been such a beautiful experience and just feeling like you don't know what doors are going to open until you actually put that foot in front of the other to just see what's available to you so true actually i can so relate to these are my people i mm -hmm. felt the same way when i it ended up in graduate school uh, with a bunch of other like-minded and like-hearted people and also in my code of 12-step recovery group. I'm not good with small talk and to finally be around people that we could go deep and uh, this and similar to you kind of always being the friend that would talk and give people the pep talk so I totally can relate. That's amazing that you found your place and through meditation. It's how Demisha and I found uh, some decided to work on Sunday Soul Day together was through prayer and meditation. And I often find that it's the path of least resistance that gets us there. We just have to listen to our higher power and listen to our inner self. So it's really beautiful. Um, so I want to ask you about uh, you have deter you have been determined to help women to overcome challenges and build confidence and realize their desires. Can you share a memorable client success story and how it changed their life and maybe also a little bit about uh, how it contributed to your own transformation? Sure, sure. Um, I think one of my favorite client success stories was a client that I had that um she had worked her way worked her butt off to be very successful in her corporate position um once we dug into that because she was just finding she was so incredibly unhappy um she had she wouldn't say this but i'll say it for her she had more financial abundance than she ever needed or could have asked for yet she was so unfulfilled her health was deteriorating um they couldn't find anything that was wrong with her but the blood work was just going crazy she, the stress the toxicity it was just too much um, and I feel like in life, we just have that heat turned up until we pick ourselves. And I think this was her opportunity to choose herself. So when we started working through, uh, you know, kind of like, well, what is it that you would want to do? And she's like, what do you love? I love children. She has a natural motherly instinct. She loves everyone else's children and she is not a mom. So I was like, have you considered that? Have you thought about that? You know, and she's like, I thought about it, but I've never had time because of this, right? The career is still sitting in the way. It's too much time. How is she going to do that? Um, and so then uh, we went through this. She's like, you know, I talked to my friend in between sessions and she said, 15 years ago, I told her I wanted to foster children. 15 years. And she's like, it's still something I want to do. 
And I think we both just cried when she said that, because I think when we have these dreams and we have these things we want to pursue and we look the other way and then five years goes by, 10 years goes by, 15 years goes by and um, it's kind of on the, on the shelf. So she is, um, I, so we've, we, we're done coaching now, but we have walked her through small steps during our coaching experience together to have her walk toward the fostering opportunity. And so she is, uh, she has now moved into a um, more diverse area in her city where she, whichever, whatever the child looks like, whatever the child, you know, um, it, whoever the child is, she doesn't care, but that they'll be accepted in the community where she, um, where she now lives. Um, and she's getting, she's a certified foster parent now, and she's getting ready to have her first child next month uh, in terms of going through that process. And she's also created an exit plan for this career that she felt incredibly stuck in that has destroyed her health. Um, and she just is choosing herself. She's not delaying it anymore. She's feeling empowered to not only transition from her career, but now also head towards a dream of hers. And she's now just let me know that she's going to create a business for it as well to help foster families have permanent housing instead of being moved around every couple of years or so. So that is my favorite story because it was just kind of um, you know, I think, like I said, I just think we all get have to choose ourselves sometimes and that can look very differently. Like for me, it may have been a marriage for her it was just choosing a goal or a dream of hers. And she is like, well, I'm not a mom, but I will be. So it's, it's just a beautiful story. And I'm just so happy for her. Wow. And that you were a part of that. You yeah. helped switch gears. That's amazing. And, and quickly, can you share how that impacted you? Oh, um, I think immediately it just saw it made me realize why I'm doing this work. Like it it really helped me. She was one of my early clients, too. So that was like a good, <laughs> a great uh, transition to just be able to be validated in knowing like this is though you may not be impacting 500 women in this one conversation that like your life purpose is tied to so many other people, even through my one connection with her. Now she's going to help, you know, other lives. And maybe she would have never done this if we had not had that experience. So just, I don't take lightly, like the, the magnitude of this role and, and this, this Im impact I can have in people's lives. So it's just made my heart warm. So, yeah. I love that. Ashley. Oh my gosh. I love that transformation story. And you're so right. Like, um, I remember this quote, uh, that Oprah had mentioned that Dr. Maya Angelou, the late great Dr. Maya Angelou said to her, um, when she was starting her school over in Africa and she said, you know, I wish you could have been there. This is my legacy. And Dr. Maya Angelou said, you don't know what your legacy is going to be. Your legacy is not one thing, but every life you touch. And so I love that you mentioned that. It, it still gives me chills when I hear that that quote. So <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, with that client and so many others that I know that you're working with and, and uh, impacting their lives positively, can you walk us through some of the tools, uh, tips, or techniques you offer or practices that you do with your clients? Um, I think you have a, a kind of five uh, question audit that I would love for you to share. Yes, yes, I do. Um, I have a couple resources uh, that I open kind of not just for my clients, but also like just just like free accessible offerings. Um, five questions to audit your life is one because I find with my um, clients and I just think in general, we just have a hard time some if we're not intentional about it as being honest with what do I want. Um, especially as women, I think we kind of gravitate toward what others want for us or what, who do we need to be or what does society expect us to be and where our parents want us to be. And that exercise is really just to get clear on what do you want and not what do you want five years ago? Who are you today and right now? And what do you want for your life going forward? So I definitely, um, I used like a, a pillar framework for that of ref re reflect, reassess and reroute. Um, and I have that and I have like a meditation bundle that I just created. Um, I found that most of my clients and I don't, you know, meditation, I feel like is a practice and it may not work for everyone if, if they don't try it. But a lot of my clients um, wanted to do it or they've done it once or twice and then they're like, I'm not good at it. And I constantly hear I'm not good at it. And so I have a lot of tips on there. Just this is not medicine. This is a practice. You have to keep going and keep trying to do um, and do the practice and show up for yourself. 
Um, so I have that and it's, it's just a two day kickoff. I've uh, recorded a couple meditations that, that folks can listen to. And then, yes, I have my Heal, Grow, Evolve journal. Um, journaling was huge for me during my healing journey, just to notice my patterns, constant emotions that I'm having and like, things that I'm writing down. I'm like, oh, I said that two weeks ago too. And I'd flip through it and be like, okay, what's underneath that? Like what's behind that feeling? So I, um, I always, now I got pretty good at journaling so I can just use a notebook, but I know that a lot of clients also say like, I don't know what to write. And so I created this journal, it has prompts, it has affirmations, it has questions so that you don't have the pressure of like just having a blank paper. What are you feeling today? What are, I think I have questions in there like, what did you learn this week? Like rate how you, you know, what did you, it's like a temperature check. I have little smiley faces on some pages, like just to kind of start to get the practice and get comfortable with it. And then maybe one day they can use, you know, a blank sheet and be okay with just waking up and writing what you feel. But yeah, those are three tools that I have available right now. Those are fantastic tools. And it, I'm telling you, go get her journal. Um, I love that you give the prompts. That's one thing my my mom mentioned when she has different journals. Uh, she has a really hard time just writing things out. And so she loves the prompt, whereas I've been journaling since I was like able to write. And so, so I can write in everything that I'm feeling. And, you know, I write everything out, like things I want to release, you know, three or five things I'm grateful for. Like I, I can do it just naturally. And so I love that you offer that, that option um, for people who were journaling just isn't as strong and the other tips, just phenomenal, phenomenal tips. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Ashley, I experienced that with my clients as well, that they either aren't good at meditating, aren't comfortable meditating or hate meditating. They don't want to have to sit still or they don't know how to journal or even just pulling out their journal is, is really hard for them. So having um, prompts or having um, different ways to meditate, I think is really great uh, to have it accessible for everyone and every, you know, each person's style. Um, yeah, that's really great. I love that you mentioned that, Allie, because that's one of the tips I have in there. It's like the actual reason you don't want to meditate is actually the reason you probably need to meditate. Like you don't want to slow down. You need to slow down. Or I think I also hear like my mind, um, I can't quiet my mind. Well, you got to practice. It takes practice. And I'm like, and there are days when I've been meditating for years where my mind is just busy and that's okay. You know, apply, apply grace and compassion toward how you're feeling. It may not, every day may not be the best meditation, but there's a lot you can get gained from it. So I love that you mentioned that too. And I always talk about 1% is change or progress and starting really slow. So I'll have clients do like a 30 second meditation, even in my office or write, you know, the response to one, one question for a journal entry, just so that they can see that they can do it because just getting started is often that barrier. Um, so I want to change gears a little bit. You have a podcast, Becoming Ashley, and it teaches the audience about the five ways to take responsibility uh, in one's life. Can you elaborate um, on this and share a little more about your podcast? Yeah, yeah. So I just launched my podcast, I think in September. Um, I, it's on Spotify. I record biweekly. Um, maybe I'll pick that up with pace. We'll see. Um, but for now, it just was another avenue just to, that I could speak freely in and also like apply a little bit of coaching in it. Um, and I know when I was healing, it was both podcasts, Instagram, you know, folks that I gravitated to. There's just a variety of ways and I think that people learn. So I wanted to just add that avenue. But Yes, my first episode was about five ways to take responsibility in your life. And um, again, I just really am really, um, I guess, focused on centering and just slowing down and being intentional about yourself. Um, and so I walked through tips like prioritization of yourself and your well-being. What can you do to take five minutes out of your day just to connect with yourself? Can you go on a walk? Can you do, I, I think um, on the podcast I mentioned, I used to do puzzles a lot last year, just take 20 minutes and I'd get like a thousand piece puzzle. And can I put a couple together and just using your brain differently and keep learning, reading, whatever it is, um, just having that growth mindset. Um, I talked about uh, notice if you're playing the blame game. I was a huge, vic like I'm the victim and it can be as subtle as um, the way I used to look at it. It's like, this always happens to me, or I knew that was gonna happen. And just shifting that into a mindset transition um, of just 
do I always say that? And if I always say that, what's underneath that? Um, and then I think I walked through things like connecting with yourself. Um, a lot of my clients uh, that I've worked with thus far, they haven't felt in a long time. They don't like feelings. They don't want to feel them. They want to just avoid them. And so I talk through different ways to just spend time in solitude and find your peace and um, reconnect with who you are as an individual. Um, I think I've had a couple in there. I'm just trying to think like setting boundaries, which was huge for me. I was boundaryless a lot of my life and also led to why I, things were always happening to me. But I think, you know, the, the biggest thing and transformation in my mindset and why I picked this niche and, and why I work with clients on this topic is just once I realized I could step into my personal power of I can allow people to do something or I can control what I can control and just having that different mindset on the offense instead of just sitting back and just letting everything happen, a lot changed for me. And I think that is a huge mindset transformation if you haven't looked at life that way. So, so yeah, so that's the first episode. I think I talked about people pleasing, how to, I'm a recovering people pleaser as well. So I think that's my next episode, but yeah, I'm having fun with it. And, and I hope it's a good um, resource that, that people can enjoy. Yeah, well, I can't wait to tune in and, uh, you know, watch and listen to some of your episodes because it sounds like you are really big on changing activities, just really small ones or changing mindset or what's going on underneath that. And I call uh, the negative self-talk that you were just describing those extreme statements, the always, never, all, and just to stop and be aware of how we're speaking to ourselves, because that's going to dictate how we feel about ourselves and then how we act. Um, thank you. Thank you. No, I think I, I do mention that. And I talked about uh, our inner chatter and how, how mean we can be to ourselves sometimes. So I think that's one of the topics in there, too. It's just if you wouldn't say it to someone else. Don't say it to yourself either. I love all of your topics, uh, especially the reframing. I think a lot of times like the the negative self-talk is just so natural. Um, we are our worst critic, you know, and so it's so easy to be critical of ourselves and give people externally so much more grace than we give ourselves. And so I love that you talk about that um, and really touching on, you know, it sounds like you're you're really helping people understand the importance of that 1% change and, and really focusing back on themselves. Like th that's like my favorite uh, quote is to say that I just want to get 1% better every day, whatever that is, whether that's in, you know, working on my self-talk, you know, working on my relationship with uh, you know, external things that distract me or, you know, whatever it is uh, through reading, through meditation. So I love that your podcast touches on all of those things. Um, in addition to a podcast host, you are also an author, which is incredible. Um, tell us a little bit about that. And and also you self-published. Um, walk us through that because that's not that's not very easy to do. And, and what made you go that route as opposed to uh, seeking out a publisher? Yeah, um, I, it, I started that company and my other company called Empower Books. I started it um, because I wanted to do more than one book and I just wasn't sure where I was headed, but I was like, let's just create the logo and the title and we'll, we'll just go. Um, it's funny, I, my first book is Girls Can, Empowering Girls Through Sports. And I wrote it in 2020. And I just, I wrote it in about 35 minutes. Like it was just flowing. And I read it to my family and they're like, who wrote that? And I was like, ah, I did. <laughs> They're like, when? I'm like, right now. Uh, and it, it just came to me and I just put it on my phone, I think at the time, and it was just flowing. And I was like, well, I don't know what to do with it now. I don't know how to, ha I don't have an illustrator. I can't draw that well, you know? So I started trying to research and look to see, you know, Adobe Illustrator and this. And I was like, wow, I haven't done this since third grade. So this is going to be, this book's going to be coming out in a long time from now. Um, but I think fast forward a couple Christmases for uh, later, my mom had gotten my daughter a couple books and I just reached out to one of the authors and I was like, how did you do this? Like, can you just let me know how you did this? And she put me in contact with a woman who helps people self publish. And so she actually helped me publish my first book. So and become a self published author. So since then, I've kind of picked up on some tips and tricks, and now I know how to do it myself. And um, she she was wonderful, but now I can help other people do it too. 
Um, and so, yeah, it's been a beautiful journey. And I, you know, just kind of help the, uh, the authors through that journey. And then I step out and allow them to run with whatever they want to do with their with their book. So it's been a, it's been a great journey. I'm working on book number two right now. And it's about mindfulness concepts for children. So oh, I cannot wait to read that. And I so want to use your services as well, because I have books that I'm working on. So cannot wait to learn a little bit more about that. And and it's so difficult. I, I have found that more people are self-publishing than going the traditional publisher route, because they now have kind of cut those advance checks a lot more. Um, they're, you know, it's so much difficult that you have to have a literary agent and all these things. It's just so many steps. And, you know, shout out to Amazon. Uh, that's another way to publish on KDP because they make it really easy, you know, now for, for authors to do that. So love that you took that route and really just took the gusto and went with it. I can't believe you wrote it in 35 minutes. Like, that's amazing. That's amazing. I don't know. Amazing. I think some things happen and they're just supposed to be. And I was like, maybe I'm going to make this a blog. And then someone said maybe a book. And I was like... I, I never had this nudge of wanting to be an author. I didn't know anything about that, but I knew, I think, you know, my daughter, I was like, she's already playing sports. And I know now as an adult, and I had time to reflect because I wrote it in 2020 in the middle of the thick of the pandemic um, on all of the things that sports had afforded me and all the things I wanted to pass on to my kids um, and the life lessons and those intangibles. And I was like, I want to get a message out somehow. And so, yeah, it just, it just came to me and I'm happy that it actually came to life. So so I'm going to piggyback on what Demisha said. I'm also in the middle of writing a book. And so I wrote down a note that I'm going to ask Ashley <laughs> to help me. <laughs> and, um, be and before I go into my next question, I want to hear a little bit more about how you help guide new authors to self-publish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I actually, once an author has their manuscript ready, then I they can start we can start working together. So I want no parts of like helping write the book. I want it to be the author's complete creation um, and their thoughts and their their whole whole identity left with them. Um, but then once we start working together, I will I go through a, a bunch of variety of steps. But essentially, I will find an illustrator that pairs with the needs of the book that you desire. Um, and then from there, walk through an editing process, uh, typesetting, and just provide that author a bunch of different options. Um, and then we'll go through like your dedication page if you wanted, any of those other ancillary pages that are in a book. Um, and then from there, I'll show you the steps on how to get it. Um, I do use KDP, Demisha, to your point, as you mentioned. Um, and then um, Ingram Sparks as well is wonderful for, um, that's what allows it to be in Barnes and Noble. And so um, other companies like Target.com, Walmart.com have picked up my book. And so you can find it on uh, local bookstores and things once it's there. So uh, you never know where that journey is going to go once it's out there, um, but it's it's really fun. So. Thank you. That is so helpful. And I really will be reaching out to you. Yeah. You just have so many talents. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. It was very sweet. Thank you. Ashley, as a mom of two, an empowerment coach who's of service to so many, how do you find harmony in your life? I, I don't like the word balance because I don't think, you know, we're, we're balancing much, but I prefer the word harmony. How do you harmonize your life? Like, what are some ways that you feel your mind, body, and soul? I love that you used harmony because I have harmony tattooed on my arm. So, uh, no, stop. Yeah, yeah, I oh, know. No. Oh, I love. <laughs> Wait, you have to show it again. Show it again. Oh, okay, sure. Can you see it? Closer. Oh, it's in cursive and probably backwards for you all. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, Maintaining harmony is is definitely like I got this uh, actual tattoo in December of last year, and it was like just reminding me to stay grounded, reminding me to stay like just at a state where that it works for my mind and to your point, mind, body and soul. Um, I usually go to like my four go to's would be meditation, journaling, nature and yoga. Um, and you know what the biggest thing I, I've done or implemented is just grace and compassion like some days are going to be great and I'm going to feel on top of the world. And some days I'm going to be like, whoa, okay, we're going to try again tomorrow on that. And I just try to go with that mindset every day and not, I'm not aiming toward perfectionism. 
And I think when I allow myself to just take a step back and say like, okay, today wasn't like ideal um, or what do we need to focus on tomorrow? And I use lists a lot um, because I cannot keep it all up here. And I just try to aim for harmony. I don't necessarily measure if I've you know achieved it or not. I think once I have that mindset already ingrained, it's just a part of being. So those are my four things I usually go to though, um, sometimes more than one at a time, but just kind of when I feel scattered, I need to just like recenter myself. Those are phenomenal. And I love that you mentioned grace. That's something that Ali and I, you know, incorporate as well um, in a lot of our practices. It's, it, I think it's hard as women, as athletes, you know, we're, we have so much that we, you know, are trying to achieve in our lives and trying to do. And, and we're, you know, going back to the self-talk, not as always graceful with ourselves, you know? Um, and I think even it's ingrained when you're young to be, you know, kind to others, be kind to others. It's like, no, you gotta also be kind to yourself. So I wish they would teach that more in schools. It's something I'm, I'm working on with my children is to give themselves grace, like in welcome mistakes, welcome, like all those things. So, um, love, love those uh, tips that you mentioned for kind of feeling your mind, body, and soul. As an author, I can imagine you also enjoy reading. Um, do you have any recommendations that have kind of helped you along during your transition or your journey that you would love to recommend to our audience? Yes, I do. I just um, did a newsletter last month and I put this in there, so I'll share it. Um, you Are a Badass is one of my favorite books by Jen Sincero. Uh, I've read it probably three times now. <laughs> <laughs> in different phases of my life, I just re-pick it back up. And she, she's just got some nuggets in there that it's like, no matter what stage of life you're at and no matter what you're trying to accomplish, it's kind of just like, cut the crap and go. Like, and I love that. It's like, definitely as an athlete, I need that someone to like, kind of have that type of tough love with me uh, to even get me going sometimes. So absolutely love her book. And then one that I have um, heard a lot of great things about, I just ordered it, so I haven't started it yet, but I just got it from Amazon, um, is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind um, by T. Harv Ecker. And it's really about mastering your mindset. Um, and I think that's something I'm, I want to read that I've heard amazing things about it, and I just want to see what that's about. So I'll, I'll throw that one out there too, based on a couple of friends that have read it um, and one that is on my list and probably at my front door. If I know Amazon, it's probably already here. <laughs> Well, I definitely have read You Are a Badass, but have not read the other one. We'll definitely have to check that out. Thank you so much for sharing this. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I'm going to put uh, You Are a Badass on my um, audiobooks today. So I'm just finishing one book and was looking for the next one, and I'm going to go for it. So thank you for that little tip. Um, Ashley, this has been such an incredible interview. I love how you... Uh, are very detailed or specific. That really motivates me. I'm sure that will motivate a lot of people in our audience to get specific because I think too often we feel like things are general or overwhelming. And I love your little specific changes that can cause a ripple effect. So thank you so much for everything. Can you um, tell our audience where uh, they can find you? Yeah, um, so my website is healgrowevolvecoach.com. Um, I'm also mostly on Instagram at healgrowevolvecoach um, or via email at healgrowevolvecoach at gmail.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Ashley, this has been just a phenomenal interview. Um, as as uh, Ali said, like you're so specific and intentional with all that you do. And I can really feel your authenticity and just the love for what you do coming through, you know, the Zoom. So I'm just so grateful that you bless Sunday Soul Day. Also that the audience even got a chance to hear more about your incredible story and your journey and all the amazing things that you've transitioned into, not just a coach, but an author and, you know, and really helping people um, with, with such a beautiful spirit. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. I made it without tears. I'm surprised, but uh, it's been a wonderful experience to be with both of you today. So thank you so much.
Absolutely. And before we hop off, we have a quick takeaway for the audience. We wanted you to make a quick comment. Ashley just mentioned some incredible books. Um, what are you reading right now? Share it below in the comments. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday Soul Day. Everyone have a beautiful Sunday. Bye. Thank you.